Well, in your dad's C++, you would define a template with the template keyword and a bunch of clunky angle bracket. There is an implied interface with templates that's not always quite obvious. In this template, we're expecting that the two arguments can be added together with the plus sign. So we can pass in integers and floats and strings even, but that's not always obvious. Now in modern C++, we can simplify the syntax a little bit. So rather than using the clunky template and the angle brackets and all of that stuff, we can simply use the auto keyword to define our parameters and return type if we wish. The C++ compiler generates a template from this auto function. Uh, one little caveat, this is not exactly the same as the previous example because the two parameters with this function don't have to be the same type, which is a different kind of error. Let's go back to our dad C++. If we pass in things that don't work, things that don't add together with the plus sign, you're going to get a strange syntax error from your compiler. The error is going to be in the generated template code. So we have to kind of dig around to figure out what it is that they're actually talking about. Let's talk about how we can fix that in modern C++. First of all, you're going to want to include the concepts header file and become familiar with the concepts library. The first thing that C++ adds relating to this is a new keyword called requires. The requires keyword lets me specify what some constraints are on the template parameters. So in this example, I'm stating that the parameter type T has to be an integral type, which is any of the integer types, or it can be a floating point type, which includes float and double, or it can be the same as a string type. Specifying those constraints helps us get a better compiler error. Now, it doesn't change anything really, it just gives the, the compiler information on what's supposed to be passed in and producing a different error message. So for instance, if I pass in two dogs to this function and dogs can't be added, they don't define an operator plus, then I get a different error message. Notice this error message isn't pointing to the template code. It's indicating where I'm trying to pass dogs into the add method. That's where the error really is. But what if there's a color class and colors can be added with the plus sign? Other types can do that. So let's create a custom constraint called addable. Our addable custom constraint just requires that the two objects can be added together using the plus sign and that the result of that operation is the same type as the parameters that are being passed in. So the compiler is going to try to expand this template with whatever type I substitute for T. So if I substitute color, if I try to add two colors together, and color has a plus operation, then the substitution is successful. If it doesn't have that, then the substitution fails, and the compiler says, hey, I can't instantiate this template. Even simpler, forget the requires keyword, and just put the constraint, the concept is what they're called, into the template where we used to put the word class or the word type name. That's pretty cool. Or if I wanna just skip the template syntax altogether and use our new abbreviated template definition using the auto keyword, I can add addable as kind of like a, an adjective to further describe what we're expecting the input parameters to look like. Now, we can have other things that can be added together, but maybe not with the plus sign. What if we, in our color class, the name of the method that does the adding is actually called add. So I'm gonna create another concept called has add and change the syntax of the requirement so that we're calling a named method. So when the compiler tries to expand this template with strings, string is going to fail in substitution that's not an error. The compiler just abandons trying to create that template. If it finds a different template, like the old addable one that takes the plus sign, the string class does substitute, 
and that's the template that will instantiate the add method, and that's what we'll call for strings. If my color object has an, a function named add, then it will expand the template and it will substitute correctly without errors, and that will be the function that it calls. So now we have overloaded templates, and the compiler will pick the one that will successfully expand. If we have non-template versions of the function that take the parameters, of course, the compiler always selects those first. It will select the template that's the most specific or the non-template function that's the most specific first. The concept here, or the key here, the C++ idea, is this thing called Svine, which simply means substitution failure is not an error. The compiler will start down a path, and if it gets a substitution error, it abandons that template expansion and tries to find another template that can do that. Now, if eventually it has nothing but substitution failures, then, of course, you ultimately have an error. Hey, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, leave me a comment, and look out for more videos on modern C++ coming your way. My name is Chuck McCullough. Have a great day.